Hello there. Today I'm going to explain confidence intervals for business study students, specifically in relation to market research. There are quite a lot of YouTube videos around about confidence intervals for people studying maths and statistics. Some of them are great, but I'm just trying to keep it straightforward here so that business studies people have a reasonable idea of what's what. So, a confidence interval might be one way of expressing the usefulness of market research data. Confidence intervals are a way of expressing the degree of uncertainty surrounding market research data that has been pulled out from a sample. You might say this is one way to communicate how good, in inverted commas, an estimate is. Whatever method of sampling is used in market research, the data obtained from a sample will never tell us exactly what we want to know. A sample will hardly ever have features that are identical to the population as a whole. Say that Tommy Hiltoes Limited, a fashion manufacturer, is planning to launch a range of clothes for unusually tall men. To begin with, the business decides to figure out the mean height of the UK male population. The surpri surprisingly little secondary research, um, you know, I mean existing data available, so Tommy Hiltoes carry out some primary research. It'd be impossible, in practical terms, to measure the height of all men, so we have to settle for trying to do a representative sample. For instance, suppose that for a survey of mean height, we selected a random sample of 100 men. Common sense tells us that the mean height of that 100 will not precisely mirror the mean height of the entire UK population. Different samples of the same population will give different results. This is known as sampling error. It doesn't mean that someone's made an error when carrying out the research. There will always be a sampling error to a lesser or greater extent. Suppose we sample several groups of 100 men across the UK and measure their height. Using this data, a statistician calculates that she's 95% certain that the mean height of the male population in the UK is between 170 and 180 centimetres. Looking at confidence intervals notice always involves two things, the percentage degree of certainty, e.g. 95%, and the two numbers that we're referring to, e.g. between 170 and 180 centimetres. We still don't know exactly what the national mean height is, but what we can say is that if we were to, sorry, if we were to continue to sample using the same research methods, the mean would be between 170 and 180 centimetres in 95% of the samples. In other words, the mean height would be within these parameters 19 out of 20 times. This would provide an acceptable estimate of the national mean height of men. 95% is usually regarded as a practical degree of certainty to work with here. But supposing the statistician says that there's a 90% certainty that the mean height of the male population in the UK is between 175 and 179 centimetres. Uh, you can see straight away the confidence interval is narrower here. It might be thought this is very helpful that we're closer to judging what the population mean is. However, the percentage degree of certainty has fallen from 95% to 90%, so we might need to be a little more cautious. What affects the width of confidence intervals? The width of a con confidence interval depends on three things. One, the higher percentage confidence required, the narrower the interval will be. This was illustrated just now. The variation within the population is the second thing. If all males within the population are almost the same height, we can say there's little variation within the population. So any sample will be fairly similar to any other sample. There'll be a narrow, you know, a small confidence interval. On the other hand, evidence that there's a relatively big variation in heights across the population will result in a more varied sample. As a result, our confidence interval will be wider, larger. 
three, the size of the sample taken. If we take a small sample, there's not much information to go on. Small samples will vary more from each other. Larger samples will be more like each other. This is because the effect on the mean of unusual values, you know, the occasional giant or the occasional dwarf, you might say, is evened out by the fact that there are more values to draw the mean from. Basically, the bigger the sample, the less sampling error will occur. The confidence interval will be narrower with big samples. So, to sum up, confidence intervals are a way of expressing the degree of uncertainty surrounding market research data that's been drawn from a sample. Looking at confidence intervals always involves two things, percentage degree of certainty and the two numbers that we're referring to. It's between this and this. The width of a confidence interval depends on one degree of certainty required, two variation with the, within the population and three the size of samples. To find out more visit learnloads.com. Bye.